those steeples and you put them in an array that makes a bigger body, you've got a chance. But generally, most church steeples, you can prove, cause death by simply measuring soil compaction in the soil next to the steeple, which is also a good way to sue your power company to remove the power pole on your land. Simply measure the soil compaction, very cheap to do, and that is proof that it's killed everything alive in the land. So it's a good way to remove Catholic churches and power tolls, poles. <laughs> yes, other questions? <laughs> and, and we could go into the astral hygiene issues, which actually we're going to talk about astral parasites tomorrow and show some pictures. Of it. But we don't need to go there right now. You know, these are just confused kids. We don't need to pick on them too much. Education is the key. That's where we're going. So um, let's see, where are we? we? So we had our conversation about ultraviolet. We got a little sidetracked from the core of physics, which was, the core of physics was simply the geometry of implosion. Now I see it's almost 11.30. Um, we were going to take lunch about 1. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, the person who is the person who has made a career in science from analyzing interstellar pulse is again Paul of Violette, his book Pulse of the Galaxy. He is saying that, like the galactic pulsar that was within minutes of the giant Asian tsunami, um, that the geometry of the, it, it, the galactic pulsars are basically a radio telemetry system used by interstellar civilizations, and he presents a lot of evidence. Um, now, I won't comment on that one, but just tr tr try to get the general sense of why we talk about seven so much here. And again, I, I remind all of us that the difference between numerology and physics both are pattern recognition. So the difference between numerology and physics is where you predict something a wave is going to do. I'm always having this conversation with Jane, who's wonderful. But the fact is, you can get confused unless you understand the only re reason to study patterns is to actually predict what waves are going to do. So now we knew that the seven air, pardon? Or, yes, or both. But yes, but the point is that the symmetry study, the pattern recognition, is only proven useful when you see something that waves are doing. Or you're right, you don't have to predict it. When it illustrates, that's right. Yes, a pure principle of wave function. So what, we, what we're after is a pure principle of wave function. And numerology is only useful if it helps us there, actually. Okay. So now I'm going to illustrate the power of seven from that point of view, the electrical engineering reason it's powerful. Remember. The layers of heart muscle, the seven layers of heart muscle, are exactly the seven arrows to a tetrahedron. The Hebrew alphabet is the seven arrows to a tetrahedron. The sequence of the braid of DNA, the seven recursive braids, are the sequence of the seven arrows to a tetrahedron. Hieronymus Storm and the Anu and the seven phi spin of the Anu, which is the shape of the human heart, the heart of the sun, and the heart of hydrogen in the heart of DNA. They all have seven spins outside and five spins inside. So I'm now going to show you why those seven spins. In DNA braiding, it's called the seventh sign, the seventh seal, opening the seventh seal. Well, that will happen once your DNA makes the seventh recursive braid because you start to implode. 
and then you become a gravity maker. And that is the seventh sign. And it's not a mystery. It's simple and beautiful physics. And also, in terms of just the most practical present example, the human heart muscle, here's, here's the anu. The seven spins outside and the five spins inside. Here's the five. One, two, three, four, five spins inside. And the seven spins outside. We're going to look more tomorrow. This is the shape of DNA braid because there's five spins in the helix and seven spins in the braiding. And therefore, also the shape of the center of hydrogen in the heart of the sun. And that's the visual I'm looking for right now. The solar heart is the shape of the Anu. Here's the slide. Thank you. So when clairvoyants look at the heart of the sun, it's an organ of perception, and the only way out of here, they see that, on it, seventh and spikes. When they look at the heart of hydrogen, they see that, the same thing. This is from the book Psy Perception of Quarks, Modern Physics. This is the heart of hydrogen, three anu per quark. Yeah? And then when you look at the human heart, you see seven spins outside, five spins inside. And later we're going to see, when we look at DNA, this is sort of this afternoon, five spins in the helix, I got a cube, three spins. The cube lifts up and rotates in a dodeca four. And then the, the dodeca ratchets down a helix, five axes of spin in the thread that is DNA. Five spins inside. Five axes of rotation superposed. Then I take that thread and braid the braid of the braid on the braid seven times, <laughs> and then I have a soul. I have the implosive. I have Lord of the Ring. Right? So all that is because if I look at the tetra, there are only seven arrows that pass through it. And it has more symmetry than any other substance on the other shape. Four vertex space centers and three edge center pair spin symmetry arrows axes of symmetry. Seven arrows of the heart, Iron and Storm's famous book. So that's why seven is important, because if you get seven donuts rotating superposed axes of spin in the tetra cube, then you create the perfect, actually you create the perfect container. The seven spins tetra cube is the perfect container. And the five spin golden ratio, dodeca pin, is the perfect projector. And the anu, the slip knot, has the perfect projector, five spin, held inside the perfect container, seven spin. And that's the Gordian slip knot. And that's an introduction to symmetry group theory and physics. And then as we advance in that discussion, just to sort of because we are one of our excuses for teaching is to call it sacred geometry, which is really way from the um, Notice that each ball here of this model, each ball, the zone system, zone pool, dot com, Z O N E, each ball has 26 holes. Check it out, it's kind of cool. The reason there's 26 holes in each ball, which is called 26 string theory physics, ball of physics, 26 holes in every ball, is because seven arrows to the tetracubic array, here's the tetracubic side, and six pairs of axis of symmetry, one, two, three, four, five, six arrows, to the dodecahedral symmetry, six plus seven.